Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at the truly disgusting contents of Worcestershire sauce and why it is called that. Worcestershire sauce, sometimes known as Worcester sauce, is a savory sauce that is often added to meat and fish dishes, or if you like alcoholic beverages like the Bloody Mary cocktail, it can be added to that. It may or may not, depending on how much research you do on your sauce choices, surprise you to learn that it's literally made from fermented fish and spices. Yes, when you order a Bloody Mary, you're pretty much asking the guy behind the bar to pour aged fish juice into your vodka. It probably won't surprise you to learn that Worcestershire sauce is English, because of course, rotted fish sauce is English. Rotted fish sauce possibly being the most British food-related phrase ever uttered on this channel. The sauce is made from anchovies fermented in vinegar. Now, if that sounds disgusting, we're just getting started. After around 18 months, yes, months, the anchovies should hopefully be fermented enough to be little more than a fishy puree. When they have the puree, they throw in garlic, onions, chili peppers, salt, sugar, and a big pile of natural flavorings. After they have this mixture, they either add water and bottle it, or ship off the concentrated fish paste mixture in big barrels so other people can add water to it. If you're wondering what those natural flavorings are, even though the main ingredient is literally year-old rancid fish, Lee and Perrins, and later Heinz, after they bought LMP, have never revealed the exact mixture they use. This is, of course, probably more to do with the fact that someone else could steal their recipe and make their own sauce than people think thinking the mixture was disgusting. However, according to rumors and rumblings that have happened over the years, lemons, soy sauce, pickles, and something known as devil's dung are all supposedly used, because of course something called dung could be used to improve the flavor of vinegar and congealed fish remains. As for why the mixture is called Worcestershire sauce, that's a decidedly much simpler issue. It's because the sauce, most likely adopted from a recipe from India, was originally made in the English city of Worcester around 1840. The city of Worcester just so happens to be smack bang in the middle of Worcestershire. So that's it. Mystery solved and in only a few minutes. Boy, do we wish that all of our videos were this simple. But wait a second, because there's more. Back when Worcestershire sauce was first created in roughly 1837, the exact date isn't known by chemists John Wheelie Lee and William Perrins, Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins, it was marketed as something quite exotic. The sauce was supposedly created from a recipe handed down by a member of the English nobility known only as Lord Marcus Sandys, who apparently learned the recipe while serving as the governor of Bengal. It probably comes as no surprise that no one by that name ever served as the governor of Bengal. On top of this somewhat fantastical claim, Lee and Perrins claimed that their sauce also served as an aid to digestion, as rancid fish is of course want to do, and that it was effective a great medicine. As you've probably guessed already, this is all hogwash, which, to be fair, was probably one of the original ingredients when they were experimenting with versions of the recipe for the sauce. Another fishy claim made by the pair was that they first made the sauce at the bequest of someone rich and powerful, because, hey, why not? Unfortunately, they claimed the first batch was awful. It was apparently much too strong, so much so that instead of throwing it away like a normal person, they left the barrel with the sauce in their basement. When they came back many months or a couple of years later, depending on the version of the story you read, and saw the mixture of fish paste they'd forgotten to throw away, they decided to stick their finger right into it and see if it tasted any better than it had originally. For some reason, rather than dying of stomach cramps on the spot, they were fine and the mixture actually tasted awesome, and thus the sauce we know and love was born. Whatever the real story of how they come up with the sauce, it is noted that a Roman sauce known as garum was made from fermented in intestines of small fish and other anchovy-based fermented fish sauces were around in Europe as far back as the 17th century, Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins quickly displayed their business acumen by paying to have ocean liners out of Britain take barrels of their sauce on board in the late 1830s. When the passengers tried the sauce and realized that it was totally godlike, they'd buy a bottle and take it with them. The ingenious part being that thousands of their bottles of sauce were now in cupboards across the globe, just waiting for people to try it and become hooked. The plan worked perfectly, and by 1866, the pair were able to sell their chemist shop to instead sell aged fish sauce full-time due to the worldwide demand for it. Truly, they were living the dream, a fishy-smelling dream, but the dream nonetheless. 
So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. We put out brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one and thank you for watching.